One month ago, the mad professor Alexander Stein from Monkey 47 released this, the fourth edition of the Monkey 47 Experimentum series, the Amsterdam edition. A Monkey 47 infused with the Dutch speciality Bitterbaum, a deep fried meat croquette. Sounds insane? Well, don't worry, there is a method to madness. Let me explain. Hi guys, and welcome to Hi on Gin. Let me be honest with you up front. I love Monkey 47, period. There is no way around it, and I have several reasons for loving this little fella here. One of the reasons is that this gin here is what got me started on gin. This was the first gin I had after only knowing gins like Finsbury and Gordon's. So you can imagine the wow moment I had when I was served a Monkey 47 gin tonic with a quality tonic. And I love the fact that this gin here can still put a huge smile on my face if it's served neat or as a gin and tonic. I love the fact that 47 botanicals, well, in theory, that really shouldn't work. It should be a mess, right? But it works so well in this, in this gin here. I love the bottle. I love the label on the bottle. I love all the little details and ornaments on the label. I love the references that they have to gin history, to the botanical used, or to the crazy story of Max the monkey. I simply love this little... I love the stopper. I love the ring around the stopper. And I love the different uh, special editions, the slow version, the barrel aged version, or this the smokehouse cut version that you can only buy or could buy when you visit the distillery. And of course, I love these, the distiller's cut. A Monkey 47 with one extra ingredient that is added to the Monkey 47, turning it into a, well, you can call it a Monkey 48. I love the fact that since the first release in 2010 and hereafter, every single version is so different. I've been so fortunate, so I've tried them all, so I really know what I'm talking about here. They are magnificent. And then there is this, the latest series that they have done, the Experimentum series. And it is just that, an experimenting gin. Or I don't know if you can even call it gin because I don't think the master distiller uh, Alexander Stein is really looking to create gin. He's looking to create new flavors, new taste experiences, but of course within the Monkey 47 universe. Here he has seeked uh, uh, some inspiration from a country or a city around the world and tried to incorporate that country's or city's uh, specialities into this Monkey 47. So far, he has done four versions. It is the Tokyo edition, the Brussels version, the Vienna edition, and then this, the Amsterdam edition. So let me try to run through them quickly so you have an idea of how crazy Alexander Stein is, but how brilliant he also is when he's trying to recreate something completely new. The first release was this, the Tokyo edition. And no, unfortunately, I don't have that one. And what is Japan known for? Well, among other things, the rich and tender Kobe beef, of course. This fat is very rich on uh, inosenic acids and oleic acids. That is both a flavor enhancer and that changes the feel of the liquid. Alexander Stein uses an old perfumer's technique called fat washing, where you mix the flavorful fat with alcohol and then freeze it. So you're able to throw out the physical fat, but keep the fat flavored infused alcohol. Alexander also adds some uh, extra citrusy notes and a peppery heat to it uh, by using Japanese Sancho pepper. And as a side note, Sancho pepper isn't actually a pepper, but the outer shell of a seed and is part of the citrus family. And the result of all this work is a Monkey 47 with a smooth, silky texture to it and a slightly more dominant spicy note to it. The price on eBay for this bottle is probably around 1500 to 2000 
thousand euros or between 11 and 15,000 Danish kroner. Crazy, but what a magnificent gen it is. The second edition was this one here, the Brussels edition. Here the focus was on some of the local culinary wonders of Belgium. Blue mussels, top fermented Belgian beer and chocolate. The Belgians consume around 60,000 tons of blue mussels every year and some of the best mussels and the most expensive blue mussels are from the shallow rivers of Schelde. In the gin, it really brings this mineral taste to it and some saltiness as well. Belgians use top fermented beer when making their famous ale beer. This process where you add yeast to the top of the beer and store the liquid at a slightly higher temperature than you normally would, it tends to give this more flavor and a bit more you know, bitter, dry feel to the beer. In the gin here, it adds this malted caramelized taste with some additional bitterness to it. And of course, Belgium is famous, famous for their chocolate, but here Alexander has used chocolate pepper that is a variant of the Indian long pepper. And this one brings some spiciness and aromatic flavors similar to roasted cocoa beans. The price for this one here on eBay is around a thousand euros or 11,000 Danish kroner. Actually, and this is not to brag, I have two bottles of this. So if someone out there wants to trade this one for the next one, the Vienna edition, or for the previous, the Tokyo edition, send me a note, right? The third edition was launched in Vienna. I haven't tried it myself yet, but I hope to taste it one day. This one is done with apricot and poppy seeds. The best and most famous apricots are from Vachau. They are also known as the orange gold of Vachau. The local climate is particularly good uh, for the flavor of the Vachau apricots. The warm climate from the uh, Pannonian uh, in the east and the cold climate from the northwestern part of the country called Waldviertel crashes here and has a huge impact on the warmer daytime and the colder nighttime. The perfect combination for apricots. The apricots are known for their velvety texture and exceptional sweetness. To protect these unique apricots, EU has proclaimed the Vachau uh, apricots a protected uh, destination of origin. The apricot adds, of course, sweetness to the gin, but by crushing the little almond-shaped seed in the apricot, Alexander has managed to get a slight marzipan uh, flavor out of it and into this Vienna edition. Poppy seeds are often seen in traditional Austrian dishes like strudel or germknödel. And since they contain a high percentage of fat, poppy seeds are also excellent at bringing out uh, the flavors of the fine distillate, just as they did with the Kobe fat in the Tokyo edition. And again, if you have an open bottle, I would love to taste it or let me know if you want to trade with my Brussels version. And then there is this, the latest edition that was released a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, end of June 2021, the Amsterdam edition. And no, they haven't chopped up a bicycle, used Verstappen's old Formula One racer or infused this gin with some local herbs from the local coffee shop. They have gone for the local and very delicious snack, Bitterballen. And if you haven't been to Holland and tried one of these fried snags, it is an old 19th century dish that used to be a way of transforming yesterday's meats and leftovers to something you could eat the day after. Today, it is shredded and chopped cooked beef added to a thick roux with onions and parsley and seasoned with nutmeg, salt and pepper, and then left to refrigerate until it's so thick that you can cut out the squares. Then you roll them into balls, then you dip them in, in eggs and roll them in breadcrumbs, and then you deep, uh, deep fry them and serve them with some mustard on the side. 
In 2020, these bitterballen was declared part of Netherlands cultural heritage. The taste of the bitterball comes primarily uh, from the beef stock that is used to make the roux. By using vacuum distillation, steam distillation, and alternative aroma extractions, um, uh, the, the iconic taste of the bitterball and the used beef stock is captured in alcohol. And to complement the traditional mustard uh, to the bitterball, mustard seeds are also added to the gin. And the gin has this spicy, savory, and round flavor profile and this subtle uh, hint of tangy mustard. The uh, inspirer of the gin, the glorious bitterball, is usually consumed very hot, uh, just as this gin gives you a warm, warm feeling. So guys, there you have it. A crazy series of gin, something that is truly unique, and that really shows that gin, you never get bored of gin. And if you want your own bottle of Experimentum series in the future, sign up for Monkey47's newsletter and get ready to join their raffle and try to get one of the only 500 bottles in this series here. And just as a note, 300 of these, the Amsterdam version, were only sold in Holland, so only 200 were released outside Holland. That is how rare they are. But promise me that you will do this for love of gin, for love of Monkey47, and not for the money, because Gin should never be an investment um, object, but it should be fun, cool, and a great way to be with good friends and family. And my goal is to get a Danish version of the Experimentum series. Come on, Alexander, let's do it. Let's do a Rødkrød med flu version. A red berry pudding often done with strawberries and served with double cream. And one of the hardest things for a foreigner, foreigner to say in Danish, Rødkrød med flu. Uh, sounds like a throat disease, right? Or we could use some of our famous bacon or famous butter cookies. We could use new Nordic foods from restaurants like Noma, Geranium, The Alchemist, or we could find amber on the shore side and use that in the distillation process. Or maybe we could use some Lego bricks or a piece of a windmill from Vestas or part of a TV from Bang & Olufsen. Take your pick, Alexander. Just let's do the Danish version. If you want ideas, call me. Until next time.